Farilan, your first speaker for today. So before we will start to the formal discussion, so let's have the prayer first. For us to be guided with our Lord Jesus Christ and for us to learn the very lesson for today's discussion. Can you read the video? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. So we will start uh, to discuss about the topic for today. So let's have an activity first. So the activity is all about uh, interpreting the images or analyzing the images. So uh, we will present uh, three images in the screen and each image is given uh, two minutes to analyze it. So do you understand the instruction? So very good. So first images. So you have two minutes needs to analyze the time's up so can i hear your side or your interpretation about the first image what is that very good the little boy is writing and your interpretation of that image is as absolutely right so second so what would be your interpretation from this image good so the image shows that her mother read a story of certain thing or read a story for his or for her little girl so next slide okay very good the reason or the very reason why I want you to interpret or analyze these images that I represent. It is because our topic for today is all about image analysis. So let us define first what is image analysis for us to know what would be that, okay? Do you understand? So let me read this one first so that um, you will understand what would be image is all about. So. From our very research, image analysis, it is used, defined as used as a fundamental tool for recognizing, note this word, recognizing. Next is differentiating. Again, note this word, recognizing, differentiating, and less quantifying diverse types of images. So let us take or highlight it, these words, these three words recognizing, differentiating, and quantifying. So once you need, once you analyze an images or diverse types of images, so you need to recognize it, you need to differentiate it, and you need to quantify it. So when we say analysis, you need to differentiate or as ascertain the elements of an images in order to determine its intending meaning intended meaning and we need to analyze uh, images so that we could understand or we could explain what that images is all about we or we could be able to know what that images is all about or what uh the painter or that person wants to express from that images okay do you get it okay very good next slide So let, uh, let me ask, why do we love images so much? So do you have any idea why as love images so much? So first reason why we love images so much, it is because we are very visual creators. So when we say visual, then it is the things that we see. So, so since we are visual creators, creators then we could easily uh, understand uh, visually. 
Like through visual, we can easily get or we can easily understand what that is all about. So the next reason is that images are able to grab our attention easily. So do you get that? That that we people are are uh, since visual creatures in through images, our attention is easily diverted. So can you see children once they are a uh, scanning book so they are finding uh, a lot of pictures like i think i not think but children are easily or we people can easily uh, understand through pictures or images and then, and by that our attention is already divert as since our attentions are already divert then we could easily learn from images okay do you get it that that there one of the reasons why we love images so much, it is because images are able to grab our attention easily. So do you understand it? Okay. Next reason is we process images at an alarming speed. Very quick. So in, in an images that we could easily the, understand the intended meaning quickly without without hesitation without doubts without confusions and it's indeed that through the process of images that we could easily it understand quickly so first is cartoons so cartoon is used to entertain children or even us since it's capture our attention and our childhood days are full of cartoons because we think cartoons are really funny and uh, or we could get something that could apply us when we are when we was a child so the next one is graph and chart so graph and chart could be used at any facet it could be in business or in educational purposes or or when tally something so that we could be able to know their contrast or their differences and that's the use of graph and chart. So through that graph and chart, then we could learn. There's a, we could be able to differentiate, uh, compare, or or even know their similarities, or know their rate, their or their standing, or their rank. And that's the use of graph and chart. Good morning, everyone. I am um, Marjorie Albergara, and I am your second speaker for today and my topic will cover two components which are why teach with images and how do we analyze images but first let us start with why teach with images according to that to hero on 1988 pictures have several functions in the teaching and learning process First, we have images can translate concept or abstract ideas to be more realistic because visuals look like the thing they present, they are more easily remembered and linked to the original idea. The second one is it is easily obtained for teaching with objects, also for its students with higher level of visual literacy. The third one is it is usable in different kinds of academic levels in a way that it is beneficial to teachers as well as to the students in providing explicit ideas which can drive easily to their learning and in interactive way of analyzing images during primary to college years. The fourth one is it generates ideas in the basic sense of questioning its meaning because students have their own comprehension level in interpreting the image so they can come up various inter It is also important to know the benefits of image analysis where students develop awareness of historical context, develop critical thinking skills, 
enhance their observation and interpretive skills, and develop conceptual learning techniques. The more learners are exposed to various contexts, to the nature of image analysis, they will become a keen observant and or develop independently, which aid them to evolve in different fields. Next slide, please. So now let us know how to analyze images. So here are the following procedure. First, we have select an image. Choose an image that lends itself to deep analysis by students. This analysis strategy works best when the image is one that reflects intentionally or not a particular opinion, point of view, or perspective. Visual art, propaganda images, photographs, and political cartoons are good examples of visual media that reflect a perspective. In selecting images, it should be a reflective one so that the learners can improve this their thinking capacity in interpreting images. Another procedure is lead students through analysis. Share the image with students by providing copies or by projecting or displaying it in the classroom. Lead students slowly through the following six steps. And the first step is, next slide, please. Step one, ask students to look deeply at a picture for a good long time. Have them observe shapes, colors, textures, the position of people and our objects, and etc. By this, the students will then analyze the picture independently, which gives them the exactness of the interpretation of the picture. Step two. Have students write down what they see without making any interpretation about what the picture is trying to say. By allowing students to take note of what they see on the picture can also help them in their analysis. Step three, ask students what questions do you have about this picture that you would need to have answered before you can begin to interpret and ask as many questions as you have. This will help the students to think easily the questions that stuck on their minds based on the presented picture. Next is step number four. Have students discuss their questions with two other students in the class to try find some answers. Allowing this way could better improve students to their learning pace as to understand well in discussing the image to the class. Step five, given the historical context and subject of the piece, ask students what they think the artist is trying to say. What does the piece mean and how do they think is the intended audience? This refers to the description and the interpretation of the image and to whom it was addressed with. It is also important that the image will correlate to the interpretation as well. And the last step is discuss your interpretation with the class and be prepared to support your view by referring to specific elements of the image and what you know about the history of that time. This time the learners will prove his or her interpretation to the class and how he or she relates to the context of the image. And to further discuss, let me call on DC Jane Onabia to continue. Good morning, everyone. To continue the discussion, let me first introduce myself. I am DC Jane Onabia and I'm your speaker for today. So let's go on to that, discuss the process. So take a few moments to discuss with the students 
how they experience this process of analyzing visual media. For many, it may feel uncomfortable, slow, but by practicing and discussing this process, students will begin to respond more thoughtfully and critically to the images they encounter every day. Discuss the process. It is very important in analyzing the image. Why? Because it is a method to perform some operations on an image in order to get an enhanced image or to extract simple, some useful information from it. So students and teachers can use image to give information and, and easily get information based on their perspective about the picture. So in discussing the process of analyzing that image, it really helpful, helpful to students because it develops their thick critical thinking skills and able to integrate their experiences for effective learning. Okay, since we are all done with the discussion, let's have a short review. After this, you are going to do a test. So let's go to a review. Image analysis. So, again, what is image analysis? It is used as fundamental tool for recognizing, differentiating, and quantifying diverse types of images. Next is, why do we love images so much? We love images so much because we are very visual creatures. Images are able to grab our attention easily. We process images at an alarming speed. Next is why we teach images. We teach images because images can translate concept or abstract ideas to be more realistic. Next is benefits of image analysis. Students develop awareness of historical context, develop critical thinking, enhance their observation and interpretative skills. And also it develops conceptual learning techniques. Next is how to analyze images. So there are three procedures. First, first is select an image. So you have to choose an image that lends to a deep analysis by students. Next is lead students through analysis. So we must uh, share the image with the students and by displaying or projecting the pictures. Yes, then the third one is discuss the process. So as I've said, discuss the process is, uh, it is a method to perform some operations on an image. In order to get an enhanced image or extract some useful information from it. So, since already done discussing with the uh, analysis image, so for your performance task, I have here three questions. First one, what does image analysis mean? Now, second, in your own perspective, how do you analyze image? Third one, what are the benefits of image analysis? Type your answers on the chat box. I'll give you 10 minutes to finish. Okay? Are we all clear? Do you have any questions with regards with our to uh, topic or the discussion that we had? Okay, none. So you may now start answering. Thank you.